Ever wondered if there's another version of you out there living a completely different life? What if every choice you didn't make created a new reality? Welcome back to Beyond the Hub Podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Brandon. Today we're diving into the world of parallel universes. Imagine infinite versions of you, each living a different life. Intrigued? Let's talk about it. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the science behind the multiverse. Who knows? By the end of this episode, you might be wondering if there's a universe where you actually remember to take the chicken out of the freezer. Not me. I always forget. Let's start with the basics. The multiverse theory suggests that our universe is just one of many. Imagine countless universes, each with different versions of you and me. It's like having an infinite amount of parallel worlds. Exactly. One of the most popular theories is the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics proposed by Hugh Everett in the 1950s. It suggests that every decision we make creates a new branch of reality, leading to a massive number of parallel universes. Just think about that for a second. Every choice you've ever made exists in a parallel universe. There's like, there's a version of you that took a completely different path in life. I mean, that's so mind-blowing, right? Yeah. Like, what if there are versions of you who made different choices? I mean... Do you think your life would be drastically different? I mean, share your thoughts with us on that. I think so. Um, I don't necessarily subscribe to this. I think it's a good theory for sci-fi um, fiction, for, for, for novels like that. But I don't personally believe that that's the case. Um, with parallel universes, many different people, uh, versions of myself living different lives. Um, I think we're going to get into that a little later about where I can go into detail about why I don't believe that. Um, but I just, I just think there's, it, it would, it would negate the significance of certain other aspects of our existence. Yeah. I mean, let's, okay. Let's dive a little bit deeper then we'll dive into uh, quantum, quantum mechanics, quantum, quantum, quantum mechanics. The many worlds uh, interpretation suggests that all possible outcomes of a quantum event actually happen, but in separate branching universes. Right. So, for example, if you flip a coin in our universe, it might land on heads. But in another parallel universe, it would be landing on tails. And these universes are constantly splitting, creating an unimaginable number of parallel worlds, practically infinite. Now, this theory raises some intriguing questions about fate and free will. Uh, so if every possible outcome happens somewhere, what does that actually say about our choices? That's kind of what you were hinting towards, right? Exactly. Like, do you think this means that our decisions are both significant and insignificant at the same time? Mm. Let us know what you guys think. I personally, that's why I don't subscribe to this myself. Um, because I think all of our choices individually, as a, each individual human, um, are ins- are significant. Very, quite significant, in fact, because we only live what, one life. You only get one shot at this. Um, and I know many times in my life I've thought back and like, what if I made a different choice in this situation? Um, but when I really come to the understanding of why certain things played out the way they did i'm more grateful for the experience that i had even though i regretted making a certain decision because i learned something that i would not have learned if i didn't make that decision you think those have to happen i I believe so it's this gets into a touchy subject of like i think it's calvinism where they it's the argument of fate versus free will because in the Christian faith, according to the Bible, God has granted all of us free will. Um, and the Calvinist argument is that we're predetermined to be with God or without God at the end of time. But that just looks at things from a different perspective because they, they say that God knows all. They're, they're accepting that God knows all. They're accepting that God is omniscient. He's outside of time and space. 
Um, and they're saying, if he knows all, that means he knows where you're going, which means that you have no choice. It's like, not necessarily. Um, it's that we have choices. We have free will. God gave us free will. But because he is outside of everything and he created everything, he knows where our choices will lead us. Not that he's making us make certain choices. Mm. Um, and I think that our free will is very important in that in that equation there. Without uh, the free will, without free will, I'd say maybe it'd be more likely for the infinite number of parallel universes. But with free will, I don't necessarily think so. Because in another parallel universe, they should also have free will. What's to say that they're not going to make the same choice I make. Do you think it's, you think there's an illusion of free will? Like in reality? Yeah. No, I don't think it's because if we make those decisions and they already supposed to happen, does that kind of negate the free will? Are you talking about from God's perspective? Yeah. So like if I wanted to do something, but it wasn't supposed to happen that way. It's not a supposed to happen that way. It's a uh, God can see because God is outside of time. So God is not uh he he doesn't see things in the timeline sense that we do where we have our past present and the future where our choices will lead us and choices in the past which brought us to where we are in our present it's it's not like that he sees it as a um uh, this person exists like i brandon exists he sees me that exists and he can see my entire life play out not because he's controlling that but because he exists outside of time like we experience time god exists outside of time and space so he sees he's i i think when we talked about our theories about the fourth dimension um that god existing outside of time and space is that fourth maybe fifth dimension where we theorized where time and space are kind of like more more so time is like a you're seeing all the things that happen sequentially okay kind of like the interstellar movie yeah, yeah yeah right like that's what i believe god would see and that's just a human's interpretation being um shared with other humans in the form of a movie but i i believe that it's more more like that not that God says you can't do this or you can't do that. It's more, I know you're going to do this. I wish you would not do this. Here are my words. You still have the choice to change, but God ultimately knows what you're going to choose. It's not taking away your free will, though. It's just giving in all that power to the highest power, God the Father, the Creator, Yahweh, to... It's accepting that he can he, he knows all of that. He can see where it's going to go. So I went on a little bit of a rant there, but um, I definitely think that our decisions are extremely significant to our individual lives and even humanity as a whole. But to going back to our decisions in general, I just want to everyone to visualize this. Imagine if every major historical event had different outcomes though in different universes there would be a world where world war ii for instance had a different ending or where technological advancements happen at a different pace or even a world where world war ii never even happened mm -hmm. that'd be crazy um and this idea isn't just theoretical it's a popular theme in movies and tv shows like sliding doors or rick and morty and these portrayals they give us a glimpse into the endless possibilities of parallel worlds. So another theory that supports the idea of a parallel universe is, is string theory. So string theory suggests that our universe is not the only one and that there are other dimensions beyond the hub of our uh, dimension or perception. <laughs> I joke myself up there a little bit. Yeah, well, beyond the hub is still, you know, pertinent to this yeah. conversation being that we're the ones having the conversation and inviting all of you to join us. Um, but yeah, according to the string theory, there could be multiple dimensions beyond the three that we experience daily. Uh, these extra dimensions could harbor entire universes with different physical laws and constants. Imagine that our, our universe is just one page in an infinitely thick book with each page representing a different universe. As some scientists like Brian Greene 
had popularized these ideas and brought them into the mainstream. But what do you all think of the idea of extra dimensions? I mean, does it change your view on our universe? And we'd love to hear your theories. I think, um, I think that extra dimensions are more likely, and I mean, I'm mean, not even likely. I, I think it's undeniable that extra dimensions exist being that we can observe the first second and third dimension but we can't we can observe our dimension that we exist in and all those below it but we can't observe outside of the highest one we exist in which is the third so we can't observe the fourth we can only theorize about it but being that we understand the relation between the first second and third dimension we can theorize that the fourth dimension can see down into the third uh second and first dimension but they probably can't see the fifth if there is a fifth um I think that's very likely. I think that's more likely than parallel universes, entire universes. I mean, like, isn't the universe all of space and time? Isn't that what it is? Like, well, that's what we define the universe as. I think so. Like, all the galaxies exist within the universe. It's not like, well, we're in the Milky Way galaxy, and that's in this universe, and the Andromeda galaxy is over in that universe. No, it's all in the same universe. I mean, if they talk about, like, it could all be connected to one universe, it's just a parallel universe of it, so it, all the universes could be connected in one giant universe, but we're just paralleling that. So, all, you know, you know, you see what I'm trying to say? Kind of. I, I, I have trouble, the parallel universe thing, like, I mean, I really love Rick and Morty, uh, but the parallel universe thing gets really confusing at times. It does. To, tr to try to wrap your head around it. It's like, wait, you're you're the Rick from what universe, and you're the Morty from what? And they, because it's so confusing, like mm -hmm. the show writers lean on the fact that it's confusing, and they can kind of just, if if they find themselves in a plot hole or something that they're mixed up on, they can kind of just like erase it with the fact that there's parallel universes. <laughs> like, oh, oops, we didn't see this one coming, and the fans are kind of theorizing all this stuff, so let's just. Uh, We'll fix that right here with this retcon of a parallel universe <laughs> existing here. And that's, well, we, we pulled the wool over you guys. Um, I mean, I don't think that's necessarily what they do all the time, but I think it's it allows Easier. them to do that if they need to, because it's, it's such a dense, not even, maybe dense isn't the right word. It's just such a diverse, large topic to cover with such minute details mm -hmm. to the little bits like it's it's ridiculous i mean so throughout history i mean these like many cultures have had concepts that resemble parallel universes though for instance norse mythology speaks of uh, i'm going to butcher this yagadrissel <laughs> I don't know how to say this. Norse I'm sorry. Mythology, I cannot pronounce properly. It will, it's it's honest. It's a giant tree connecting different realms. I, I could have just said that. I could Jormungandr. I'm pretty sure that's one of them. I yeah, think that's the giant, the world snake. Jor Jormungandr, Jormungandr. See, I can't even say those. They're they're they're, they're words are wordy. Wordy. I can't, I can't read them right. Yeah, I can read Japanese a little bit. That's like, impressive. I, I like Japanese. I'm I'm a weeb. Um, but yeah, with the giant tree connecting different realms, um, there's also Hindu cosmology. There are multiple lokas or worlds that exist simultaneously. And these ancient beliefs might be early reflections of what we now explore through science. And these ideas have been part of human thought for centuries. Even if they were framed in mythological terms, it makes you wonder if our ancestors had some sort of intuitive grasp on these concepts. Huh. I wonder. I don't know. Have you guys ever come across any myth, myths or legends that hint at parallel worlds? Share your favorites with us. I definitely have one. It's What's not it? even. It's it's the Bible hinting at heaven and hell existing. Um, those are parallel worlds or alternate dimensions. So you think that is a parallel kind of a parallel? I don't know. Like what's, this is where we get into the nitty gritty of the, 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 the defining. It's just something that exists in our, that parallels our universe, right? Wouldn't that be? I don't, I don't think like heaven and or hell 
are like mirror reflections of the earth that we see and it's just a positive or negative of it i don't think that i think they're actual different significantly different places that exist that you need to be i think something about your i know this is going to sound a little hippy dippy but uh your your vibrational frequency that you're tuned to whether it's the positive going towards god or the negative going away from god is where you're going to end up and i i think they're separate places and i believe that because of my astral projection experience when i've seen what i think a step closer to i believe a heavenly realm would 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 somewhat be like um because i when i was astral projecting just real quick just uh not gonna go too much in detail but i I, i've seen the way that that was layered on top of our real existing world with things having like energy and aura around them like life living things living beings had like waves of energy around them um that i could visually perceive with my uh, eyes and my spirit form so I, I think that both can exist because I've seen this astral plane and I believe in what the Bible tells me of tells us of heaven and hell. So I think maybe the alternate realms, I'll, I'll call them realms because I don't really think they're parallel universes. I think it's within our all of existence universe, but just something we can't access right now, heaven and hell. Astral projection, you can access that astral plane if you want. I don't encourage it, but everybody has their free will. I want to talk about some of the the scientists behind these theories. So I think you talked about talk about Hugh Everett, for instance, introduced the many worlds interpretation, which uh, it was initially controversial, but has definitely gained some notoriety over the years. And then we mentioned Brian Greene who's done some amazing work in popularizing string theory and the concept of the multiverse. His books and lectures have made these complex ideas accessible to everyone, if you're interested. And we cannot forget about Albert Einstein, whose work in general relativity and the concept of wormholes, also known as einstein rosen bridges, opened the door, so to speak, to these theories. Although he was skeptical of quantum mechanics, his ideas have indirectly influenced the exploration of parallel universes. And these scientists have opened up new ways of thinking about our universe and our place in it. And their work really challenges us to reconsider the nature of reality itself. And I think they're doing very important work coming up with these theories, but I don't think that it's wise to necessarily subject yourself to believing that one of these theories are like the actual explanation of our existence it's i think it's healthy to consider them i think it's great that we have people in society that pontificate these things mm -hmm. and come up with these theories and that's uh, kind of what we're doing in ourselves right here having just a conversation with this just talking about it just talking about it coming up with our theories what we believe and do you think that we'll ever be able to prove the existence of parallel universes and like what impact would uh you think that would have on our understanding of reality now let us know your thoughts if it was actually found to be true if i mean i would accept if it's found to be true uh, i would accept it even though i didn't believe it at first you know I'm, I'm not refusing to have my mind changed on anything other than well one thing that that um i subject my myself to the rule of god the mm -hmm. creator and following the teachings of Jesus Christ. That, that, that is one thing I you, no one will ever be able to shake my mind on. Everything else, I'm, I'm, I'm considering, open to hear about it, trying to consider how it would maybe help me understand something a little bit differently than I could have, could possibly, could not have possibly understood without considering this information in the first place. Um, but the impacting my understanding of reality Man, I don't know how that would that would really shake me up because of parallel universes. That would really mess me up knowing that there's another one of me out there. 
And then I wonder how that, I mean, if that person's me also just to dumb their universe of me, they'd probably be just as messed up. They'd be like, what? Or if that universe, they're living the absolute perfect life and they don't even know it. Like they're just like, oh, everything seems to be going right for me because that's just their world. I would be very angry. <laughs> I would be very angry. He's over there just living in luxury. Mm hmm. He bought that lotto ticket or something. I would be very angry. <laughs> Uh, but you know, framed you from framed framed from an aspect of gratitude for where I am and the blessings I do have. After the initial anger that floods over me, I'd be like, you know what? I would not be as as humble of a man as I am today if it wasn't for all of my struggling. So, you keep doing you, alternate universe, Brandon. I don't care. But uh, I think that's going to be a wrap on our first episode on this Parallel Universe series. We've just scratched the surface of this topic. Absolutely. And tomorrow we're going to be exploring the myths and legends of parallel universes from ancient stories to modern ones. It's going to be another intriguing episode. So make sure you join us. Your theories and comments fuel our discussions. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And click that little bell and uh, share your thoughts below and the exploration will continue we cannot wait to have you back for even more revelations don't miss out episode two will be airing tomorrow at 5 p.m eastern standard time and if you are new here thank you for being here check out our previous series where we attempt to unravel other mysteries link will be in the description stay curious and keep seeking the truth until next time this is beyond the hub podcast where the realms of the paranormal and conspiracies collide and the truth is waiting to be unveiled we'll see you soon take care everyone <laughs>